dead lands reloaded. The guns of the Civil War are silent thanks to a ceasefire between North and South. You live by the gun, you die by the gun. We're getting screen data because, you know, why not? So we get Mikey's vision, Mike, the vision of Mikey. It's a test for tonight. Yes, it's a test. So we are 16 sessions into Rippers. God, really? Woohoo! I think we spent eight sessions chasing the hide serum. <laughs> that, that exploded far more than I ever imagined it would. I thought it was a be, I'd get like two, maybe three sessions. How long have you been a part of this group? No, I, well, you guys kept giving me, giving me material to work with. I'm oh, sorry, European road trip. <laughs> European road trip, that's right. That's See right. the people, make friends, and kill them. No, kill their enemies. That's what I did in Europe. See them driven before you. <laughs> Give them a lot of to their women. <laughs> <laughs> what, nothing from Bob or Mikey in that one? Come on, limitations of the women, that's Conan right there. <laughs> the good Conan, too. Yes. The first time. None of this destroyer crap. That was pretty bad. Well, let's he's in talks to do another one now. Anyway, back to uh, the conversation. I, I, I'm still enjoying Rippers for the most part. I'm not a giant fan of the plot point. I made that down a bit. But uh, I am liking the setting. You I, 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 I like it a lot. I like the setting. I like the... Yeah, I like it a lot. I'm just wondering how many of us are going to end up having uh, implants by the time this campaign is over. Are we going to even be recognizable as human beings? I hope not. <laughs> You're not... Your character's barely there now. Depends on the uh, on the tracks, Bob. You know, I, gotta say, I think we, <laughs> we have some choice there, right? To be fair, we needed to be pushed in that direction. <laughs> Bob, Bob, Bob and I are already discussed it at some point that if he would be an easy target to, to play with as far as, you know. Oh, you mean it was okay for to take a risk with Bob's character? You must be joking. <laughs> Bob has a little less attachment to his characters than most of you guys do. Bob is the only character to die, and it was Bob who died. <laughs> Frankly, I have to say, in nine years, I'm surprised that we haven't died more often. I'm sure Very a lot of that was engineered. I will say, at the beginning, particularly in 4E, I definitely pulled some punches in that first year, year and a half. And then you guys were so powerful in 4E that the only way I could have killed you was to throw something grossly, grossly outside of the the uh, your, your capacity to deal with, actually. I, I wonder how much of that was because we did some things that were not 4E, like Castle Amber bumped some stats. We definitely, we definitely broke the system a little bit. How dark did we get in 20 minutes? I know. Oh, yeah. wow, yeah. Bob's the dark. I think that um, Savage Worlds, and, and the other thing is, you guys use your heads in combat, which makes it, I can't just have stupid enemies. Yeah. So you guys use your heads, so I have to give you bonuses or, 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 or relations to that. And you, have been, was on. and you have been rolling freaking insane lately. Past couple sessions, our rolls have been brilliant. It's, it's like Mikey's chair to love. Should that bonus die be a D8? <laughs> no, the bonus die should be a D4. <laughs> no, no, but I'm saying when we roll it, we explode on that. Oh, yeah. Too often, should it be a D8 where you're decreasing the number of explosions? Yeah. The, math, no. the math there is really... I know you looked at the, the math, right, Bob? Yeah, we crunched the math uh, back when we first started Savage Worlds. This is bigger makes it bigger better. It makes a big difference the larger those die get, that's for sure. I think, I think it really depends what you're shooting for. If you're shooting for a raise, then a smaller die works better. Because you're more likely to roll a... Uh, but you're not looking for a raise, you're looking for the best overall roll on a single die. Yes. And then for that, the statistically, the bigger die, the better. The bigger but, die, the better. but to reach a 10, if you're rolling a d6, you know, you have a 1 in 6 chance of exploding... 
If you roll your D8, you have a one in eight chance of, of exploding. But once you do explode, it's much easier for you yeah. at that time. Bob, the numbers, the numbers yeah. have been done. We looked at it when we first, when we first started. We, somebody had done a pretty detailed analysis, and I think Bob. Bob. Yeah, analysis. I, I seem to recall that it, although when it comes to a D4, you're more likely to get explosions. Ultimately, the larger the die, the better your your target numbers are going to be. And I think it also pointed out how ridiculously powerful a plus one to anything is oh, in right. Savage Worlds. It, it, it definitely has a skew that way. Yep. But a minus one is equally Death damaging. Yeah, the slippery <laughs> slope of damage. Yeah, it's the death spiral, they call it. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Although, I will, it's, it's pretty sad right now, they, as Bob pointed out to me, and I, I had seen it earlier, the peg ink forms have been down for like two months. Really? Yes. They uh, lost their funding? <laughs> no, they, they had an issue where suddenly, I guess they had a critical mass, too many, too many posts or something. And people started seeing posts not from them and or, or posted as them but not them. So the database got corrupted. The database they had some database corruption issues. And they, they said, you know, we've done very little maintenance on this thing. And then they, they hired a company to try to fix it. That company ended up not being able to fix it, so they had to go find another company to fix it, and that company tried to sort through hundreds of thousands of messages. Yeah. Yep. Well they're they're an RPG company. They write they write, they don't manage forms. You know and wrong computer nerds, but not the right <laughs> I'm genre of computer. They're, yeah. they're an interesting crew. I think I they hired a mom and pop IT team to maintain their uh, their boards, and then that group uh, had health problems, so they weren't able to do much of anything. So it's just a kind of a bad scene all over. They should have hired a care consultant. Nah. <laughs> Does they still uh, exist? That's right. But they're, so they're missing, which is kind of sad. Because I still would love to. There's a point of me where like, I want to go back and look at some of those good bad loops from the old days. Oh. Yeah, I got that it. was so much work to write up. It was so worth it looking back. It was so much free. Did it feel like it was worth it as you were doing it? No. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? It, and that, there it did because I was getting positive feedback on it. When I started doing the Ripper's write-ups, I wasn't getting a lot of feedback. Oh, so yeah. it wasn't as worth it. That's why I stopped doing the write-ups. You know? And I just started giving like, the five-line write-ups for you guys so you can remember. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll, we'll recap. I think Mikey has obviously played from the most and most unique places. Oh, without a doubt. Bob has played the most time in the car, though. I don't think Mike's ever played from the car. But Bob has been in the car at least twice. Yeah. Yeah, that's. I guess that's true. Jeez. Um, what's your most? Uh, I played from a hotel in Baltimore once. Once. I think I played on vacation once, and I played from my house once. We played from, we played from the houses once. We tried the the big arena. The big arena, yeah. Oh, it was a one-off. Yes. That yeah, was a one-off. That was a one-off of the snow. snow houses, yeah. That was a one-off That was snow. like that bad snowstorm, right? Yeah. So it just worked None out. of us made it to Josh's house. No, Josh barely made it here. <laughs> that was a good one, too. That was a really good, like, even the final battle was, uh, we had two quantum endings, I seem to recall. That was fun. Uh, I kind of liked the, the split timeline ending. I agree. Because we, we misinterpreted one of the rules. We found out later that it should have gone the other way. Oh. And so we just decided that it was, you know, that the timeline would split. Oh. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. That was fun. I, I love retconning things like that sometimes with the group. I kind of rem that kind of reminded me of, like, the end of one of the Rocky movies where he fights uh, someone and uh, Apollo Creed, I think. Drago, it doesn't matter. And that they don't show us who wins. Oh yeah, he, he well he, he 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 boxes Apollo Creed at the end of the of Rock Rock in the gym. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. So so here's a question. We obviously we played a ton of fantasy in 4E. We played War of the Dead. We played sci-fi. We played Deadlands. Sci-fi. We've played we're playing Rippers now. I know if I said what would you like to revisit, you'd all say Deadlands. Yeah. After that, what would you like to revisit? Deadlands only if Wong Fei is there. That ain't happening. I know. There, there's he's so got a story with that. Chris would love to go back to playing Deadlands. He's got this extra job now, though. But uh, once that's over, he is totally in for Deadlands once again. Once the, all of his kids are through college. <laughs> <laughs> so another five. Six Which is like years. that's only four years from now, really. Oh my god! No, my oldest. We went to, when we went to Bob Stag, they were little kids. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think I went to Bob Stag. Well, when we started, you had the baby monitor going on. We did. Uh, Speaking of little kids. Oh, your kids, yeah. Yeah, oh, Ty just yeah. been born uh, 
That was like two months old or something. My kids have no recollection of us not having game bags. 10.9. Even Jules? Okay. Even Jules. She was four. Well, she's 13 now, so she was three or four when we started. You guys have been coming that here forever. Weird to think that we've always been a part of their lives. Poor soldier. Why would you do that? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> that is wise. Oh, come on. We tried really hard to stay out of your hair for a long time. We played outside. We, we played, played in the, the garage. garage. The garage was cold. <laughs> Moving from the garage to the living room was so god. It was paradise. Oh, but I like the. Uh, he did something the in the garage for Halloween, was it? Did he use candles? The projector on the wall. What was that, Bob? For Halloween, didn't you put up candles or something once? That was really oh, cool. Oh, that was Castle Amber. We had no. the LED tea, tea light candles. No, that wasn't Castle Amber. That was, yeah. you were trying to rescue somebody for something. And I was trying to enforce that it was a rush that so you would take five every time. <laughs> so I was playing music. I was playing screams. Mm. And I had the tea lights going to try to kind of set the setting. And it was so dark we couldn't read the dice. So they called it, hold the dice up and put the tea light right in front of the dime. <laughs> I've tried a lot of things. We tried music for a while, we tried... Uh, the music was good, I thought I put my water back. It got repetitive. That's true. But, uh... You know, I gotta say, though, I just remember I could still feel my feet being painfully numb in the garage. That was the worst. We lasted, feet. like, two months out there. And then I was like, no, we probably have to move the house. Sorry. Right. Thank you, Amy. Yeah. <laughs> as long as Adam doesn't sneeze, it's fine. <laughs> At 3 a.m. Yeah, as long as he doesn't sneeze, we're good. I do, I do love, though, when I would sneeze, and Josh would get the text that says, oh, I'm blessed. <laughs> <laughs> so it felt bad, but it made me laugh, too. What was the latest we ever played? 2.30. Did we have 2.30? I think that first session, 2.30 a.m. You, le you left at, like, 2. I did. finished at 2.30. Yeah. I remember yeah. here, we played outside, and we were trying to go to sleep. I could carry you in the bedroom. Yeah. Because it was just all carrying right down the back of the house. <laughs> yeah, we, we didn't last outside for very long. I think it was more the noise than the elements. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and the, the iterations of how we played, I think. The iterations of technology. So, so, Mikey, obviously this is the best level of tech for you. Well, what? Is it, Mike? I'm so, we're assuming. Is this, the best, is this the best tech for you, Mike? Leave it all like it. Is this what? I'm going to disconnect. Okay, Bob. <laughs> is this the best level of tech you've seen that has worked best for you? <clears throat> oh, this is definitely, I mean, don't get me wrong. I got to be honest with you. It, it was a lot of fun back in the old days when we had the whiteboard with the squares on it. And, and we had the boxes with the laptop with the camera facing down on it. Yes. That was some good shit right there, man. I don't care what anybody says. However, <laughs> I love the it, the video is awesome. I mean, I love being able to see you guys. I mean, it was it was great seeing that, but being able to kind of see you guys and the way we do this now with uh, with Roll Twenty, yeah. I, this is by far the best that we've ever had. Because like Map Tools was really cool, but you couldn't see us. That's right. Yeah, well, I was say, Map Tools was great, but you're right, I couldn't see you guys. This is the best of both worlds, right? Because I, I you know, I have it set up where like if you guys are talking, it switches the view or I can leave it on the view of the map or whatever picture you have up. Um, I really like the way Roll20 is. Yeah, that's definitely... And I, guess, I guess with Roll20 we can see the video a little bit. If you make the avatars big, you get the video. Oh, yeah, that's, yeah, So I leave the avatars big on my screen so I can see their faces, see faces. Yeah. But, um... I, don't, I think the tech with the most impact, though, was the pizza box with the one inch squares. <laughs> That was where we were just like, oh, the ship, shit. Even, oh, even the ship. Yes. 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 I oh. made this, and I, then I tried making other things out of that. Like I tried making a staircase and tried to make some set pieces out of cardboard. That didn't play. That, that didn't fare out as well. But that was like the second or third session, wasn't it? What was the first? We were outside. Tech. Map building system. Map tool. Dungeon. I was drawing them, printing them at work, cutting them out, taping I, them together. I use that one. Once or twice as well. That was that was it's laborious. I used to, I used to spend so much time prepping. I would spend more time prepping than playing. Yeah. But you know what? You you I build a whole map map, and it's one encounter. You only for four weeks. That was okay. But you only had two encounters a night before me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There, there, you know, there are guys who, who build like a whole 
town. I got on a pool table. Oh. They build a 3D model of a whole town on a pool table, and then they spend that one was weeks and weeks in town. It's not. It's not. I was fascinated. <laughs> Yeah, you've got too much on your time on your hands when you're doing something like that. That's your that's your hobby. I was gonna say everyone needs a hobby. Iron Man I makes suits. <laughs> Josh does uh, concrete. Apparently, do concrete does now. <laughs> but yeah, he's gonna drink alcohol on that piece of concrete for decades to come, though. True. We hope. <laughs> oh no, you'll be drinking alcohol. <laughs> oh, that was the yeah, question. Yeah. <laughs> Two girls will be drinking. Oh God! <laughs> Never mind. I was oh, going to say that. <laughs> so, so for Jeff and Adam, by the way, we were we were at a party the night and they had Fireball. So I had a big glass of Fireball. It was not good. Oh. Oh. I, I, I did not I like Fireball when two sheets. Yeah. And this is cheaper. And I think it is legit better. It is only 30%. So it was I think Fireball's 35. So I will say the coolest tech, though, was when I had the projector mounted on the ceiling. And we had the uh, the IR device. That was cool. So we could drive things around. When it worked. It was cool. That worked pretty well for most of the time. It just became... I think that was the least used tech that we had. I don't remember it lasting very long. Like two sessions, maybe? I, I would say we used it three or four times. It just it didn't pay off enough for us. Yeah. Yeah, because that was that was going to lead to the projector underneath. Yes. Up, oh, and I was yeah. You had to build the cabinet. Yeah. I, I had actually just after you finished your main cabinet. I had actually built the cabinet, but I couldn't. The short throw projector ended up being like a thousand bucks. That's what it was. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And, uh, the problem became that the projector was so much money. I forgot about that. Not even just the bolt, the projector. Yeah. Oh God. I did like the. I know, I know. You guys might have just said this. When Josh had the projector set up, to, like from the ceiling, hanging downwards, projecting on the table, that was pretty impressive. That was really good. The, 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 the long night just boils down to the setup time for me. Because then it became. I, I'm, 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 you guys are gone. I'm not even close to ready for bed at that point. Never <laughs> yeah. mind the fact that you would spend days and weeks prepping. I, you know, I really and enjoyed I'm prepping. With you not doing that. I really enjoyed prepping for a while because I, I felt that I was writing a bit more of a story then. So <coughs> now, now I want you guys to drive the story more, so I don't prep as much. Does that make sense? That's yeah. how have we evolved as players? Amazingly. <laughs> I mean, I can, when, you, when we started, it was we were all hack and slash. That's what we grew up playing. Yeah. Um, that was it. Go on the dungeon, go. Do you really want to do that? Let him pour. There's only so much room with all the ice out. True. I don't, what do you guys think? Did Mike, do you see us, you know, development of players for us over the past nine years? Oh, no, I, I definitely do. So, do yeah, play? okay. So, I think when we first started, I, I would agree that getting back kind of into the D world, um, you know, I, I mean, listen, here, here's a perfect example of exactly the type of players we were. Bob had a cart with 178,000 javelins in it. Bob well, still has hey, a cart with You don't know. I might need those. I might need those. <laughs> right? <laughs> so, I mean, think, think about what we brought to that table. True. So, yeah, we were total hack and flash. I will say that I think what really turned the corner for us was Deadlands. Well, Savage Worlds. Savage Worlds, right. Savage Worlds in general, but I think Deadlands, the role-playing switch from just the kind of, you know, run through the world, find the next encounter, Can't beat wait. the shit out of whatever was there, <laughs> uh, and then move on until we run through the world and find the next one. Savage Worlds totally changed that. But, Mikey, you know what I agree with you on that is that 4E... Like, I remember having all my cards laid out of things that I could do. I remember you blowing me up a lot before. Yes, there were like eight, I mean, it only got worse, right? But those, I was limited to the things that I could do. You put yourself you in a box. You thought you were limited. Once, we all did, it wasn't just you. Once we switched over to Savage Worlds, now I could do what I want to do, versus having a list of things that, possibilities that I could do, now I could do what I wanted to do. And I think that was more freer for us 
in that sense. I will say too, I, I think a lot of it was Savage Worlds, I don't remember exactly, did we start that with everybody with sci-fi? We started with the... Uh, the horror one. The horror one, like, uh, like, had, like a, only had a few guys for that. Quickie right? Mark kind of place, yeah. uh, yeah. like Deserted Burner. Road. What? Like right here. I remember the card, the card, uh, well, the we have all the cards, and you slipped it over in the middle of the aisle to, like, try to find it. So, so, I mean, the whole... I remember not doing the combat, and had it with the last, not doing combat. The whole impetus for Savage Worlds was more than that. I had read it, I had read somebody else's version of it, and I wanted to play that. I wanted to GM that. But I think, not Savage Worlds, particularly Savage Worlds sci-fi allowed us to become more storytelling. It was kind of the start of the curve. Yeah. And then I think that Deadlands really kind of brought us around the rest of the hairpin of that curve. So, you know, we could, we could say that we've evolved as players, but uh, I'll remind you of our experience with the Assassin's Not. Trying to, you know, navigate the subtleties and the politics of an entire town full of assassins. And we blew an entire day on a ship killing a sea monster. Just because we needed to kill someone. But that was a role-playing decision. But you know, you know, the irony is, Bob continually brings that up. Bob was the one who pushed us to go fight the monster. I know. (laughs) Oh yeah, there was no role-playing involved there, guys. I just wanted to kill something. (laughs) Yeah, Bob, we hadn't killed anything in two weeks. We needed. uh, I think it was. I think it was like exactly. I think it was three or four sessions with no. Oh, I don't want to talk about assassins. So, so I, I do feel let down that we didn't do better with that. I was very satisfied with the solution to S1. We got, for the most part, through Tomb of Horrors. Fairly well intact. So all I'm thinking of, it wasn't even Tomb of Horrors. It was, I bent down very, very carefully, kneeling down very low, very carefully, to try and kind of shoot below. The, carefully, you slip and fall. That was Joel, that was Joel reading the module as written. Oh, that, I thought that was you. <laughs> no, I think no, that was I the module. DM, I didn't yeah. DM. Well, I didn't S1. think that was S1. I thought that was something. Maybe it was me. I hate. I hate. I, I was hate an AD the, dungeon crawl. I hate when the, when the, when that forces me to do something. You you want it to be wide open, but then like e- even uh, with this with Rippers, like a couple sessions ago, I think we we had all these great ideas. So let's try this. Da, 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 da. But it wasn't what the module yeah. says to do. So it was just all wasted. And that's what, sometimes I think that well. I was going to say, the Adara campaign, the original 4E campaign, was very successful. Because I wrote the whole thing. Yes, exactly. And you think of course, more like we do, It was maybe. very painful for you because you wrote the whole thing. By the end of it, the first, the first half of that, I really enjoyed it. By the time, when I stopped being able to challenge you guys around level 9 or 10. And we only had two encounters a night. It, it, it really dragged for me. And I was having two was, cards in front of me. Joel, it's your turn. Oh, uh, what, should, what should I do? Mikey. I kill everything in front of me, <laughs> and then Adam, then, then Adam, oh, that, actually, Adam, uh, Jeff dropped it on Adam. Adam, Adam says, and everybody attacks me, and Jeff attacks everybody on me, but only hits me. <laughs> what? No, and it was a crit. <laughs> and then Bob lets him go again. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, so let me ask you this question. So, what do you think happened with War of the Dead? The module became too, well, okay, two things. One. What we tried to do in the email, that was way too much for Josh. Well, that was separate. That was that was great, but it was destined to tap. Oh my god, that could have been that was so much fun, but it absolutely destroyed. So much energy time yeah. with upright. I actually saved all those emails because that was so much fun. But I mean, so with the campaign The War of the Dead, Josh, from your perspective, where did where did we go off the rails? Because I mean I, I definitely felt like I think we all got very frustrated with it for some reason. So so here's what happened with War of the Dead. Before you get started, I think it Playing ourselves was a fun idea until we started doing it. I, I think that once we started getting into the game as ourselves, it became too limited. And on top of that, so, so what happened was, I I had read several write-ups of guys who'd gone off the rails with it. I encouraged you guys to go off the rails. We had some great stuff. The whole military-based stuff. I was going to say, some of our best role-playing. I think that was, was all made up on the spot. I, I, I beat you guys to death. With your your previous activities on the ship, if you remember, the, the, yep. the what was her name? Uh, so oh yeah, I was telling a guy at work about this who doesn't play D and D. I don't think you can understand. Yeah. About how good it was that, you know, in the beginning of this campaign, you guys had hogtied a little girl and you know bound her, you know stuck a muzzle on her or whatever, you know gagged her. You were afraid. 
It was legitimate. And then six months into the game, that came back and bit you in the ass. Bit all of us in the ass. One of my favorite moments of you as a DM was that. Because I, I you know, we, we kind of go along. We go, okay, we do these crazy things. And yeah, whatever. But at that point, the cons- the, cons- the the actions that we took had consequences in the game, and I loved it. War, War of the Dead is, and, and you guys became better players from Savage Worlds. I became a much better GM during Savage Worlds. I learned to improvise better. I learned to let the story flow and not say no. I painted you a corner for once. <laughs> and I got out. <laughs> it was great. Um, was but what, hap- what happened was you guys finished the first part of the four, four, four parts, and the second part, it, was just, it wasn't it was as good. It kind of meandered and didn't really get anywhere, and then it eventually became what we don't do well is, is managing other stuff. You weren't adventuring so much as managing stuff, and I just knew that wasn't going to work. I guess one thing that... No, I, nobody enjoys figuring out how many rations you have left. Nobody, nobody, yeah. nobody who's here today. <laughs> no, he, I don't even think he yes. would enjoy it. He said once, he yeah. said, I'd love to play D&D and, and, and use all the rules. <gasps> yeah. Terrain. Yeah. Rations. How much arrows. are you carrying right now? How many pounds are you carrying? Encumbrance. Yeah. Oh, you're tired. Oh, you're... <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I don't know about you guys, but I have no interest he or to be desire fun. to maintain food, water, clothing... There's no way to make that fun. I'm just to well, out. you know, it's kind of funny because e- even back in the day with some of the other groups that I played with, we never really managed. I mean, there was always kind of the, okay, you know, hey, you're in this town. You stock up on everything that you'll need. Okay, go. Everybody just hand-waved it. It just wasn't. Well, <laughs> but, you know what I mean? Like, everybody just kind of just said, okay, you know. I mean, obviously, you know, some of my older GMs were, how much shit are you really carrying? No, you're not carrying that much stuff. You know, I can appreciate that. Everybody. How many movies yeah. do you want to see where they go through and say, "No, I want to see the A team go out and count their bullets and yeah. figure out." Uh, yeah. Well, how heavy is the uh, vehicle now? Oh, you have eight thousand gold pieces huh? on you right now. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody wants to see that. You just yeah. want to see action. Yeah. In, uh, Although I will say that uh, I feel like one of these days, if we do a one-off, I, I think I have an idea for me for. A, uh, a one-off adventure, which is very survival-oriented, and keeping track of your stuff is going to be important for your survival. And I think there's a way to make it interesting. If not every time, but I think it's like trapped on a deserted island kind of thing with hostile natives uh, and a limited number of arrows. You know, something like that. If that's where you the really point have to make hard decisions. Box, I'm all for that. That's the point. And it's short. I couldn't do a whole campaign like that. A one-off, absolutely. Yeah. Well, you know, you know, the only other thing I'll mention to you is uh, there is a uh, RPGMP3.com. They do a role master uh, session. I think it runs 15 episodes. Uh, and the best parts are not the actual adventurers. It's when the adventurers go to the shops because the DM just let them go shopping. And it was entertaining as hell. So sometimes the shopping can be quite interesting. Like, uh, like depends, that's over like us ordering breakfast at the diner outside Area 51. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> exactly. Yep. To me, it was when I let you guys have full reign in the Home Depot room. Or the, uh, I forgot about that. That full was fun. That Home was cool. That, and, and you guys, single, you, Jeff and Adam, one of my greatest write-ups was that you guys were trying to defend this. The, there was a, you were trying to defend the city at the end of War of the, War of the Dead, you guys... You two jumped in, and it was like something, in the, like you versus a thousand zombies kind of thing. Yeah. And, and it went, and Mike's like, I'm not doing this. <laughs> <laughs> Heroic Mike. <laughs> Sometimes you just got to cut your losses. Adam and Jeff, they're sacrificable. Let's go. We won. <laughs> uh, you actually felt, you, 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 you didn't quite make, you know, this thing was over. Well, we won that little battle, but we didn't die. You didn't die. Lost the war. We won yeah. Although even then, the War of the Dead was getting increasingly uh, surreal. All of a sudden, we had super fast zombie babies running around, and yeah. you're just like, "What's gonna happen next?" I, I, was, I, I was able to capture a few moments of horror in that. And horror is really oh yeah, hard for us to do. The first episode, Josh. I think at the very end, you have the father who's infected who gave his daughter to Mike, and then. Asks Mike to uh, 
to end his life. That was that was a dark way to end the first session. There were no words there. It was a he handed the daughter to you and just kind of looked at you pleadingly. I don't think there was any. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. I guess there was some. We we've had some moments of of very good art, I think, and that was one of them. I still love the old man on the airplane. That that is one was part of that. Adam had backed me into a corner of our role playing for like an hour, and I had I nowhere getting, to go. I was getting worked up. I had nowhere to go, and that came in as, as a solution. And the old man shot himself, and everybody at this table was just like, huh? "What?" I think where the dead is maybe one other time. There have been times where my character is getting worked up and upset at somebody else, and yeah. I'm feeling that as a person. <laughs> War of the Dead is also the easiest one to. Because we're playing ourselves. Well, even not playing yourself, but it's modern times. It's yeah. it's uh, Walking Dead. We've watched forever. You know what I mean? Oh, it's yeah. it's there, personal. There there was something where I was having a, a, an argument with either Bob or Mike. Mike. Which it was Mike. Was it Mike? And I, I like I didn't realize it until after the, the scene was over, but like my heart rate was elevated. I was flushed. Like I was feeling ser- <laughs> like very intense anger at the moment. But at the, as soon as it was, it was over, like. I was able to separate it, so I wasn't mad at Mike, but in game my character was pissed, and it was. Well, so that was the scene was with the baby. Amazing. What's that? Was that, was that that was the scene with the crying baby. Uh, On the ship, like the second week. Yeah. I think it was. I think you're right, Mike. Because Adam, because Adam, I will agree with you. I, I I remember the same kind of thing, like, like oh my god, this thing is gonna get us killed. Let's either kill it or get or or like we got to do something with it. And I remember, I, I, I totally understand where you were coming from. I mean, obviously, not a parent, right? So totally different, you know, perspective of it. But you're right. Afterwards, I, I totally understand where you came from. And I was in the same place. And I'm like, holy shit, Adam and I just almost came to blows over this, like, as real people. Yeah. <laughs> well, you also had that was part of your, it your was, edges or hindrances. Yeah. Right? That was you. You were playing you. It. Yeah. I, I mean, I, but the, it was it was just... The way I felt, it was amazing that I was like, actually, my heart was pounding, and I, I had a little, you know, that, that adrenaline rush when you get into a really what intense means, argument, but it was, you know. Of course, there's the another it, it possible was, uh, explanation that maybe somebody had a minor heart attack that night, but let's go with good storytelling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but as, 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 a, as a, like, I, I felt like a real, I felt like an actor. It was fun. It was very fun. I think that's the mark of when you know you're in a good story. You, it makes you feel emotion of some sort. That's I think true. that's when I read a book, like I really get into a book, it, it does that to me as well. We gotta, what we gotta do though is get Mikey to, to, to read or listen to Dresden because we're going to go there soon. Yeah, Mike, you've got the, 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 the audio books, right? Have you cracked those open yet at all? Yeah, as a matter of fact, I have. So I've gotten through the first book. Okay. That might be the low point of the whole series. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, it was good. I mean, I, it was. It wasn't like, oh my god, I need to jump on this next book immediately. But fair enough. Yes. So I got through the first book. Um, it was excellent. I will be uh, through August. I will be getting through a bunch of them because I have a bunch of trips coming up. I'll, I'll tell you, two is two is a little hard to get through. Once you hit three, you're you're on the runway for takeoff. I will also okay. say. I will also Can say, I just get two and go to three? Is that okay? Or, no. Yeah? Too short, though. Okay. okay. You need. There's important uh, people and places uh, that are introduced in yeah. two and three. Yeah. That, like, and it kind of sets up the character turn as well. Yeah, you need two. Okay. So all right. Uh, Mike, if this, if this helps at all, you know, Chris, not a reader, I got him 327 uh, CDs worth of audiobooks, mostly Dresden. 255 are Dresden. He's been listening to them nonstop since January, and he's about uh, 13 books out of 16 books in, and he, he just burns through it. He's really enjoying it. You will get there, but I think it does take until the end of book three to get really good. I actually figured out that I could, when I mow the lawn now, I put the earmuffs on with the earbuds in it. It's slightly uncomfortable, but I can listen to the audio book while I ride the tractor around. <laughs> The only thing I'm wondering is it's too bad Mike is uh, starting on Dresden because when we eventually do a Dresden campaign, it would be kind of nice to have somebody who has no clue about the universe. Well, if that's how they would be able to do it. Joel's our mundane guy. He's perfect for that role. Oh, that's a good point. Okay. Joel, Joel will be Butters pre turn. I was actually thinking if we brought Joel into something like that, uh, maybe make him really, really old. 
because then he can apply the history stuff and still be in modern day. Uh, no, that's not a bad idea. So we'll leave that. We'll leave that when the time comes. We'll, you know, we'll figure that one out. But um, yeah, yeah. So I, I finished book two of Alex Veras already because they're pretty short reads so far. Just catching up on Druid, Iron Druid. Just finished oh. the third book. Oh, Brock. Oh my God! So you guys are gonna love this. So Jen, when she went to Seattle. Decided she was going to stay in an Airbnb. So she's staying at someone's house. Okay. Which at first I thought was a little weird, but whatever. She's Jen, and so whatever. <laughs> so, What's he look like? What's he wearing? That doesn't sound no, like No, no. It's, it's a woman. So <laughs> Even that, no. So, so she, she, meets this, she meets this woman, Laura, and, okay. you know, obviously there for, you know, essentially like 15, you know, 15 days basically. Well, they, they, they were talking the other night, just kind of randomly talking about, you know, books and stuff. And Jen mentioned the Iron Druid books. And Laura lost her mind. Whips out this whole thing. So she decides that she's going to go to Comic-Con and she's going to dress up as Granuel. Okay? Oh, my gosh. So she does the whole costume and everything. Jen sends me the picture. It's amazing. While she's there... Guess who happens to be at Comic Con? Oh, Kevin Hearn. Kevin Hearn. <laughs> Kevin Hearn takes a picture of her and tweets it out on his website. No kidding. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> so it turns out that she's absolutely in love with the book series too. So they're going on about it. Jen calls me up and she's like, "You got to do Oberon for for Laura. You got to do Oberon." And I'm like, "All right, fine, I got it." So. <laughs> You made me do my Oberon voice over the phone for Laura. What's your Oberon uh, voice? Sausages. Oh. How did she know I like chicken apple sausages? <laughs> He's a really nice lady. I really like her. <laughs> I think I read the last book is due out at the end of the year because it's only nine books and the book game is out. Oh, really? Really? Yes. I gotta finish yeah. I can restart. I've, I've not read the series, but Oberon sounds a lot like the Beggin strips dog from the commercials. <laughs> is it audiobooks? Yes. Mike is almost Mike is almost the perfect replication of the audiobooks. Yeah, I perfected Oberon from the audiobooks. I'll be down with this. Good evening. Very cool. I have to check that out. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's uh, the book series is, it, it, I mean, it's it's very cool. I I, I got to be honest with you. I mean, it was it was one of those things where like Jen can go back and like read book one like a thousand times, but it's uh, yeah. it's really good. I, I guess there's a new, I don't remember the name of it, but I guess there's a new series that Laura was telling Jen about that we got to start reading. But once I once I know the name of it, I'll let you guys know. It. It's supposed to be really good too. Is, yeah. is it is it called uh, Alex Hearn? No, Alex Veras. Alex Veras. No, it's a, it's a it's a time something or other is the name of the series. I don't know. Time time something. I, I don't know. I'll, I'll I'll get. I'll let you guys know what it is once uh. Once Jen tells me, she didn't tell me the other night, but I'm caught up on Dresden, and I'm re I just finished the third uh, Iron Drew. No, actually, it's the fourth. I the fourth finish. Iron Drew. I finished. Okay, I finished. Yeah, yeah the, the first three. The Raven and the Crow is four point five. Okay, and so I'm reading that now, and I, I'm thinking to myself that so? after the first Iron Drew, I'm like, this is a complete rip off of Dresden. Dresden. But I think he's created an alternate universe that is. Really good, really cool, cool niches that like everything has yeah. and it's, fits I call, together it's, well. It's, I call it Dresden Light. Because <laughs> <laughs> one, there's less than 20 books. And he does not write action as well. His action no. picked up really well in the fourth book compared to the first two books at least. But for, there's something to be said for, uh, we got into a fight, you know, he swung at me, I swung back and killed him. I, I, I appreciate that brevity sometimes. Versus holding on for dear life, and then ten pages later. Yeah. <laughs> I do like the first, person, combat. the first person's perspective is great. There's yes. never a lull in the. Oh my god, that's, or... that, that, the first person perspective though is the killer for the last thirty percent of the book. Yeah. You know, it's just like. <laughs> what happens next? What happens next? What happens next? <laughs> There's no cliffhanger there. You just keep turning the page. Yeah. Oh, so, at, at what point do we plan on kind of moving into that Dresdenish world? I mean, are we gonna how? 
I mean, what do, what do you guys feel? I mean, are we are we liking where we are? Are we going to keep running through with this? I would, like, I, mean, I would like to try to finish this plot point. We, we, we've, we've fallen off the wagon on a lot of things lately. There, there's something to be said for completion. <laughs> I'd like to ride this one out a little while longer. Um, yeah, I'd like to see, I, I feel, going, kind of going back to us evolving as players and us reacting and doing hack and slash encounters to us driving the story more and more. I'd like to see us driving, you know, I feel like we can. You can give us a framework, and we can really make this story. Sure. No, I didn't. And so one of the one of the, the Dresden Files has just came out with Dresden Files Accelerated. Okay, but that, that's another system. It's a, the, the rule book's only hundred pages. Well, so, the Dresden rule book's hundred and fifty, but there's a lot of fluff. But it's <laughs> it's very much. I watched. I watched a, a like you guys. The players help design the city. So you pick the city like, like you know you said in Chicago, you pick your city. You guys go and you help set up everything you want to see in that city, what you want out of it, and then it's my job as the GM to present you options to have the, to have the interactions you want, and you decide how that happens. And from what I understand, if I want to, if I give my two cents of us as a group, right? I don't think I've ever been part of another group that has been as analytical. About every, is that is that politically correct way to say that, Adam? No, it's a question of where, you know, it depends on where you're going. Are you making fun of us or praising us? No, 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 I'm making fun of us, actually. Okay, good. I, I, I mean, <laughs> the, the idea of, like, where to eat dinner should not take two sessions. <laughs> but you know what? And then two more for what to eat. And then, right, and then two more to figure out what we're going to eat. But you know what, Mike? Did you have fun? No, no, no. Sometimes yes, sometimes no. Yeah, yeah. So, so sometimes yes, sometimes no. Josh, there are some times where you're I wish you'd be that. like, okay, that's it. I'm putting my foot down. This is where you're going. Like, I know we make fun of you and we teach you. Putting us on the rails. Yeah, I know, right? right. I know you can do that we're on the rails, but sometimes you need to put us on the fucking rails. Yeah. yeah. No, no, I, I agree. Yeah. That, that, that's me learning, too. No, no, I, absolutely. I mean, like I said, like, there are some sessions where, you know, and again, even when I was there, so this isn't just me being remote and having to sit here and listen to us talk for four hours about where we're going to go eat dinner. Um, <laughs> even if I was there, I would be like wanting to choke myself uh, unconscious. Mikey, me too sometimes. <laughs> I, 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 that's, why, that's why I'm basically saying, Josh, from my perspective, even though we might give you some shit about it, put us on the fucking rail sometimes. I will totally, totally agree with that. Uh, and, I, and especially I would when, say, for me, the decisions that are important. Yeah. Like, that, that aren't part of the plot point that we, we think are, get a, don't yes. have us waste our time. Because I, you know what, Jeff? I think we almost think every single thing Josh says is part of the plot point, and we need to overanalyze everything about it. And, but you know, what, 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 you know what it is, though? It's, I, I, from my perspective, I'm just throwing, I'm throwing shit on the wall. And whatever you guys cling on to is where we go. But, but you know what, like Mike, I was saying this, like, yeah, the, but the problem is, it takes time for that shit to dry and cling to the wall. Yeah. <laughs> I think it was two or three sessions ago that we we had to wait for, like, two days before the bowl left or something like that or the meeting. And we tried all these things out. But none of them were part of the plot point. So we analyzed stuff. We did stuff that was really clever and smart. But didn't get us anywhere because you had to wait for that meeting or whatever it was in two days. And are you talking about the last exactly. session? Exactly. I don't know if it was the last session or two sessions. Where we had to wait for somebody to die, get more information, wait for somebody to die, get, die, get more information. <sighs> Maybe we had so many other really good thoughts. I thought that just didn't. They weren't going anywhere because it wasn't part of. I guess that's, Listen, that's we kind of chased a lot of good information. We chased a lot of information around on dead hookers that nobody gave a shit about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, let's be honest. Or we thought of investigating cool things or trying to right. find this out, that, and it was just... We should have been on that... That boat should have left fucking three days <laughs> before it did. We spent way too fucking long on that. Oh, holy shit. Yeah. That boat should have left three sessions ago. Some yep. of it was fun. Some of it was not. That's where Josh just has to go, all right, so you guys go to bed, you have an uneventful night, and... Right, right, man, exactly. Get the, get the next morning and the boat's leaving. Since, since Josh is just getting back yeah. into the room, I, I will say... In his defense, I don't know how he can know 
when to do that and when not. Yeah. When it, when is it fun oh, for no, you guys? No. When is it not fun for you guys? And, you know why? Know. and that, that's what we talked about when when he writes everything. He knows about the pace and about what we're going to ask, and we're still going to go outside of the box, but it's still going to be with his his frame of reference. Where when he just has the plot points, that thing is narrowed down so tightly that... I've actually decided that for the plot points... I, so when they give, me, they give me a plot point now, they have a whole bunch of points and they, a whole bunch of little dots that lead you to the point. I don't think I'm going to follow those dots anymore. Like, if we have something clever... Somebody then, was killed and nothing you are going to say or do will have any effect on getting to the next point. Until so the, the next, next person, person dies. dies. Yeah. yeah, that was hard. Uh, we test but this, we look at that, we see if I think, it, Mike, no. what was your, you were talking about when we were waiting to get on the boat? Yeah, I mean, like, I, I mean, we, we ran around for, like, two days just, like, you know, investigating dead hookers. Who gives a shit? <laughs> it, I mean, honestly, it didn't, it, we didn't learn a goddamn thing that, oh. that, I mean, that was an entire session that we just ran around chasing dead hookers around for nothing because we needed to kill time until that fucking boat left. It should have just left that day. I, I will say, it, it, when it comes to hookers, I care very much. Yeah. Love <laughs> hookers. But I understand that's besides your point. I see, I, I, I see what you're saying, Mike. More I'm, living. I'm trying to give more Part flavor to it, but you're also saying, let's just get on with it. So I, I get that. And like I said, yeah, you know, I mean, there, there are certain, like, I, to your point, Josh, you're right. Like, you're, you're looking at a list of plot points. You know that there are some of them that are critical, right? Yeah. To the storyline, because you also know what the next session is and how, and how it kind of leads down the road, you know, to some, to some extent, I would assume. Sometimes. Sometimes, right? Sometimes so, you read it before he starts it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm totally okay if you're like, you know, throw out whatever you want or, or you know, and again, I'm, I'm not trying to make it harder for you. I, I want to try to make it easier for you, right? I, I, it cannot be fun for you to watch us run around the street investigating the same guy we know killed every one of these last four hookers, killed us in this one, you, you know. I, you know, it's, it, 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 like there's points in there where it works and sometimes it doesn't. You guys spent time chasing him around, and at the end, I wanted to leave it ambiguous whether he escaped. So that's, that was where you ran to him on the, sh on, on the, you were chasing him on the ship, and he swung, and you shot him, and he oh, fell no. in the water. He fell in the water, he was shot, he died. I know he died, he is dead. So he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> So I, you know, there's there's that there's that point, but I understand what you're saying, where it needs a little more pushing us along. Yeah. So, yeah. No, I mean, as a group, we we sometimes need to we. Well, let me phrase this: we need you to get us out of our own goddamn way. <laughs> yep. But I think the the hard and it part is much more when it's pre-written than when it's. Uh, yeah. When you're right. Yeah, like when we're off in a good tear, and you're and you're into it as well. Let us go. Oh, and, and, and you know, I, I'm not going to deny. There's sometimes that I look at the clock and I take that into account. You guys are chasing something down. It's not important. There's 45 minutes left. The next part is much longer. So I'm going to let you dally on 45 minutes because the next part's going to take two and a half hours. Yeah. Oh, I see. So sometimes, right. it's, I'm just giving you some. I'm letting you guys make your own filler material for lack of a better term. Is that the right thing for me to do? I don't know, but we, 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 we've, we've been meeting so infrequently this year that it becomes easier for me to try to compartmentalize into a session everything that needs to happen. No, that makes sense. It has definitely been tougher this year probably than any year I think we've ever played for, Scaling. but and, and that, in that scenario, I'm totally fine. If we've got 45 minutes left and you're just like, shit, I can't really start this next point because if we don't meet in two weeks and then it's four weeks, we're never, we're gonna have to go back and literally go you know spend the first two hours going through what we did four weeks ago. Exactly. That's that that's painful, right? <laughs> so so here's the question that that always plagues me, and I know there's no right answer. What do you guys enjoy the most? Now, obviously, I like the night we did Jeff's family thing. That that to me was very much a, a perfect night. You guys had to figure out if you were going to have action or stealth, how you were going to infiltrate the castle, how you were going to... That's because you built it yourself. Yes, but and it wasn't a bunch of plot points. But at the same time, All right, that, that was a very... That was very much driven by you guys. How that whole thing played out. Did you want combat? Did you want stuff? What, are you, what is it that you look for? Do you miss combat? Do you want more fighting? 
Is that still boring to you? Do you want more investigative plot stuff? Do you want what? What is it that you guys like? Want? Do you? Are you happy with the mix? Bob, what do you think? Great at memorizing. I think uh, every now and then I get a little bloodthirsty. I feel like uh, maybe we don't do as much hack and slash in Savage Worlds as maybe we have in the other systems. Which is weird for me to say because you think I would be the guy who says let's kill more things. But uh, but uh, I, I every now and then I get a little. Trigger happy and want to kill something. <laughs> I, I, I agree with Bob. I don't think we kill as I don't think we kill enough stuff in Savage Worlds. Um, but I also like the mix a little bit more now. You know, trying to role play a little bit more, trying to you know get out of that mindset. For me to get out of the mindset of just. I'm a halfling thief, and I'm just going to go kill and steal everything I can get my hands on. He plays himself every time. Don't let him kid you. <laughs> you know. Um, oh, you one, know. Other, uh, one other thing to think about. Uh, it seems like I see this parallel happening. When I think of some of the TV show series that I really enjoy, like uh, I'm starting to see trends in shows that I like, and then when we do plot points or, or gaming sessions that I really enjoy, like, I'll have, there'll be a character, and they're like, oh, this is the episode where we're going to find out about the background of that character, like what we have with Jessica. And I thought that was cool. And I think that would be great if we do something like that, one for each of our characters. And then we get introduced to new characters, family members, whoever, and they become recurring guest stars. So I'm starting to think of it more as a TV show that has uh, certain themes that we get to see that are kind of interesting. So I don't know if you were around when I said, it, when we first started, I tried to have something so everybody would do something cool every night. Then I tried to have a night where at least one person was kind of a, a got to be the star. So now, now I'm I'm back to that where I'm like, you know, I want to start alternating sessions where I have some plot stuff, and then maybe I have something where it ties in. You know, Jeff had his thing a couple weeks ago. Adam met, met his his mentor rescuer a few weeks before that. There's certainly something coming up with Mikey's dad. There's certainly something coming up with your your wife and, and, and child, Bob. I have I'm working on what I'm gonna do for Joel. So I want to try to work your backgrounds in. You guys put effort into that, and it certainly makes the world a a bigger, more cohesive place. I, I think about when I when I DM'd and it was like, all right, I need a, a two two battles. I need a role playing and I need a puzzle, something like that. You know, and you get those and originally. I would look online for puzzles, and then I was like, no, you know what? I'm going to have this right here, and I'm not going to have a solution. No, I don't have a solution for shit anymore. <laughs> anymore. So I remember it was one that was like, there's a pedestal in the middle of a room with no floor, and there's the item there. And I think you could fly or something. Oh. And like you went over, like if you could turn into or, or something, you went over and flew over and got it. But like stuff. I think you was a pixie. Yeah, pixie. But I have no idea how, because you guys, I didn't even know your characters when I wrote the the mini module yeah. kind of thing. You know, it was just like they're gonna find a way how to do it. Because if there was there was riddles where it's like, wait, you guys didn't even listen to the riddle. You guys went off this way and. You still figure it out. Like, the, I did that a lot, a, a lot. The only trouble I have with that is when you guys did a great solution right at the beginning, I want to take a little longer, so I kind of pushed that one off to the side. And then we think it's not it. I, I, I don't know about you, but I meta in my own head a fuck ton. But you guys, you guys think, okay, that's not it, so you go in the direction. And then the direction never pans out, and it's like that first solution 20 minutes ago was really the best solution, but how do I get you back there? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, mean, I think as players, kind of what I like to have is variety. I don't want to do the same thing all the time. I want to do a little bit of stuff kind of when the mood strikes me. I, I'm going to say, you guys can hate me all you want. I miss 4 d a little bit. <laughs> you know, I, I can understand. Well, we haven't done anything in that. Tactical combat. Yeah. Tactical combat with synergy. I like the grid. If we did it for more than a whole, a night and maybe a half, I would fucking hate it and not want to touch it for a long time. But I, I like having a mix of things to do. I want some investigation. I want some hack and slash. I want probably a majority of RP, but not all RP. But sometimes you just want to kill shit. Sometimes you just want to kill shit. And, and I think that's like yeah. when, when you gave us, okay, 
Jeff, it's your, you know, your, for Jeff's moment to shine. We can choose our approach, because as a DM, how do you plan what we're going to do when we don't know what we want to do? I just roll the punch now. Yeah. But I, think I almost, I, I almost envision like each session or, or like, you know, like I, I almost think like, like, like War of the Dead and, and even, even, even Rippers and, and some of these other, they're designed to be these like weeks and months and years long type things. And I almost want to figure out a way that we can go back to thinking about like, how do we achieve this particular thing in one or two sessions? Do you mean campaign or like plot point? Like, almost like everything's a mini campaign, right? So, you, you know, you, there's this plot, or you know, the, the plot point should be a mini campaign, right? You you want to connect the dots? Yes. Yeah. Or yeah. no, I want to get from destination to destination, but there's not one road that I have to take to go from one to the next. Okay. I want to be able to go. My own path, yeah, like, but still get to where I need to I be. Mean, so that, that's what he's saying. Where it's you can do the stealth, you can do the hack and slash, you can do the yeah. And he's saying the tough part is how how does Josh set that up, where we can do what we feel like that night. First of all, we have to know what we want, which there's that's half a night. There's five of us. <laughs> how do we all know? How, we don't all have the same ideas for the same night. And well, please, actually, actually, there's only four of us because Joel doesn't usually say much. So oh, yeah, true. I was thinking there's four of us. There's five. four of us, and we just tell Joel where he's going. There's, there's five of us. Four of which, four of us, four of which have opinions. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but no, no. I, I mean, to Jeff's point, I, 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 I agree, right? So, so to Jeff's point, you know, we need to get from, or, or Josh, right? So if 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 the ultimate goal is we, you need to get us from here to here, right? We need to go from A to B. And, you know, the, the plot points kind of drag us, you know, through town and, and out to the country and, you know, over the hill and through the woods. And we decide, you know, we're going to get on this newfangled thing called an airplane and we're going to fly to that other town. Does that work? Mm -hmm. You know, there's... I'm trying really hard. There's not that much interesting history in 1895. It's a preparation for World War One. Like, so I'm trying to find future. trying to find history things to work you guys into. So there's some yep. guy there. I, I like that. I think you guys like that. Well, you could easily have a five-year window on either side. Well, so you know what I mean? I mean, couldn't there be like a five-year window where we're building the lodge? Well, and then, and then there's a whole there's a whole bit of this that we really haven't touched. You're not building a lodge. You're not working trying to get influence and, and making contacts and that kind of stuff. And I don't know if, if it's if I, I'm I'm. That's the one thing that you were talking about with like the next level. Yeah, uh, am, am I at up. fault because I'm not pushing that? Are you guys just not interested in that? Is it just not our style to have that? I don't know if it's our style to put down roots. Yeah, I mean, I kind of feel like that's a great way to put it. I, no, like I said, I'm not we're an A team. You're right. Uh, yeah, we're, we're, I, I think we operate, right, I think we operate much better as like an A-team, like, I think we would be better off serving the bigger, greater lodge that we belong to. Yep. But also, I, I kind of point out, though, too, that uh, most of the time, we show up, we finish eating, we start our session, someone gets murdered, and we get assigned a task to go figure out something related to the murder. It's not often that uh, we start a session after we finish eating, we turn on Bowl 20, and the start is, well, it's Wednesday night, and uh, you've just finished your lodge meeting. What would you like to do now? Like, we don't we don't have a lot of sessions that really kind of start like that either. Right? It's always kind of, oh, there's some urgency, there's a crisis, I, I, I think we need we to solve it. Because I've tried... We need a movie. I've prodded you guys a little bit about the lodge thing. We need, we need a, we need a uh, MacGuffin. I've alluded to the lodge thing a few times. I've pushed it a little bit. I haven't beat you over the head with it. And in you're only novice. You, you, you leveled up against your, your level four now, so the next level up will be season. So I mean, let me, let me ask you a question. Is there a way that we could... could be could be part of... or, or could be like the, the founders or influencers or, you know, heavyweights within a lodge but not have to deal with the bullshit of building it? Because honestly, I don't know how much fun that would actually be. I, I'm not going to lie. Having looked through the rules of it? 
I, Ford was was inserted with the intent to run the lodge for you. You would set the lodge up, and Ford would run it. Now, I, I think he works better as your companion and your your Bob the Skull. The, the, yeah. your, your, your Bob the Skull. I I I. I you know, the, the Bob the Skull exists, Mike, in Dresden because Butcher needed a way to communicate the rules of the world, and Bob the Skull was an easy way to do it. He's okay. exposition boy. He's exposition boy. I created Bob the Skull before I read Dresden because you guys have had Ford forever. Yeah. <laughs> He's yeah, my Ford, Bob Ford, the Skull. Ford goes back to Adara, doesn't he? Ford goes back to like level 12, 13 of Adara. Yeah, wow. Oh, yeah. Yep. You know, he's had. He's yeah, had no, I mean, I, I mean. Yeah, so I, I agree. I mean, I think Ford is is much more of the companion than than that. I, I I don't know. I mean, do you think we lose something if we don't have our own lodge at some point? No, it, it's more about. And then part of this I think is how infrequent we've been playing. If we play more frequently, you'd have more vested into the world. You yeah, know what I mean, you'd be more inclined to participate more in the world versus just the adventure. Am I not doing a good job in, in that? I don't know. I mean, it, I, you know, it's not that you're not. I don't think it's that you're not doing a good job at all. That, that I don't think that has anything to do with it. I think it's you're right. I think it's been tough because this summer. Well, not. I mean, it's really been this summer, right? This summer's been really kind of crazy. With this year's been tough here. This it year. just schedules, right? So, um, the question really is, how do we? But you could, How do we once, we, once we get back on track, right? So so let's assume we get back on a regular schedule around September, right? After the summer and, you know, and kids are back in school and whatever, you know, hopefully life goes to some something normal, whatever that is. Um, but, you know, I, I don't know. I, I mean, do you want do you want more background? I mean, I, I know I wrote a background for the first time ever, right? Like when I wrote, you know... Erling. I mean, I never wrote that much detail for any other character I've ever given you. No, and I'm glad to use some of that. I mean, it, you know, it's, you guys couldn't. You know, and, and, and I can I can write more. I mean, you know, if, if we need more, I I want to be able to help. I want I want to help you too. I don't I'm not, I don't, believe me when I say, you know, there were some times in forty where it was nice just to show up and 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 have everything done and you know you, you know realize all the work you put into it and be appreciative of it, like that cut out fucking ship. Out of cardboard, um, which will <laughs> forever live in infamy in my world. Um, that was the coolest cardboard ship. That was that was the greatest cardboard ship ever. <laughs> <laughs> like better than anything I ever did in school my entire life. You know, I, so I, go ahead. No, I, you know, but I, I don't want you know your life. You you got your life too, right? So you can't. You, I don't want to. I don't want to be back in a position where you feel like all you're doing is preparing for the session, and you don't get a chance to actually enjoy it as we're playing it as well. You know what? Though there, my my level of enjoyment has changed. My my personal requirements have changed. I used to enjoy the prep, the driving the story how I wanted it. Now I enjoy, and it's, it's hard sometimes. Like this morning, it wasn't until this morning that I had the idea that I was going to use tonight if we played. I could have pulled a plot point out and just played that, or I could have pulled. A savage tail out. I'm not giant fans of most of those though. So this morning, I had an idea. And honestly, do you know you know the best source of ideas? It's not backyard anymore. Or Dora the Explorer. Sitting on the toilet. There's a well. Yeah, they come. They come in the shower or in the bathroom. But that's what I want. I want Jules a set of story dice. There's nine dice. You all still of, using those? I haven't used them a lot lately. I haven't used them very much at all. But. This morning I was thinking about it, I was thinking about them, and one of the ones I had rolled once to demonstrate the jewels had had X, Y, Z, and I'm like, I can make that work here. And in fact, wow, that's going to work really great here, and that's going to progress a whole bunch of stuff. So I can do that. So I, I, should, I have to use the dice more. So I, you, you guys you guys here right That is pretty cool. You guys are yeah. the right team. You're an A team. East Texas University didn't work because you guys weren't good at staying in one place. You, you didn't have a no. Team. I uh, I agree. The concept of being in college for four years was painful. Well, you guys couldn't. You no, I mean, even for me as a human being, like the being in, you know, being in college for four years was painful. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, but you know, you, you, we, we, we we spent time. I had the I specifically had the scavenger hunt. I wrote that. 
so that you would get to know things of people in town. And, and then two, and then you'd two never sessions use later, you'd go, don't you guys remember? You can talk to so-and-so to find out such and such. We were like, what the fuck are you talking about? And you can <laughs> cheat sheet on it. Yeah. We yeah. Don't we don't remember things very well. <laughs> so that you don't do well with the base. You, you want to just... You want you want to stride the town, kick some ass, fix something, and then get out. Absolutely. And that's fine. That's the that's the game you want to play. That's fine. I don't have a problem with that at all. I the, just need to recognize that. The, the question, though, I think that, that the more difficult question to answer is, how do we do the kicking ass part? Because we, as a group, never mind the individuals, want a different thing every week, and I don't think that we know what we want until we get to the table. So how can you prepare for that? Hmm. I know. I have to. I, well, we did Jeff's family. That was that was that was probably my, my my nirvana, where I was like, "Here is an adventure. You guys figure out how to solve it. You can go any way you want. You could have gone diplomacy, combat, stealth. Any of those options would could have worked. And you guys chose your chose your, you, you did choose your own path. So, is is there a way you can can kind of put the the how? In our hands every session. I don't know about every session. I can try to do more. Majority of sessions. Yeah, it's just the learning. So probably there's probably ways that can do it. You know. And do you, but do you? I mean, I, I gotta imagine there are some sessions where you have to kind of drive us. Sure. Just keep it moving, right? I mean, there, there's got to be some driving somewhere. Now, now, do you guys like it when it wraps up in a session? You know, like, like the hunt for Anton and the hide formula took like seven sessions. Too long. That was a, at least three too long. Could, yeah, but, yeah. Right? I, I, I'm okay if things take you know two or three sessions, but once they go over three, I got to be honest, I start losing interest. No, I felt I felt the same way with that. I, I put this in front of you, and it kind of it kind of had to run its course at that point. Um, that was probably my own fault for making it the way it was. It was a nice payoff. You know, this. Nice, not great. <laughs> we did get to, we did get to crush a boat into a ship and blow it up and sink it. That, that was cool. Yeah, that was pretty fun, I have to say. Yeah, and and it was historically it was, accurate. Yeah, it was pretty cool, and it was historically accurate. Was, the historical accuracy piece of it was good. I had to work so hard to figure out how to get you guys on the other ship. How to get you on the <laughs> ramming ship. Hey, that, guys, you're on a ship. You tell them to ram another ship. Okay, sure. I appreciate it. I really did, honestly. I'm giving you a hard time, but I appreciate that. But just, just getting you to that ship was really... I, I had to work through... The iterations to get you to that ship. You had to give us the rails to get off the ship without letting us see the rails. It was hard. And it took me a long time. And then when you, the payoff was great. I mean, it was. I really enjoyed being able to tie it back to that historical feature. Yeah, you know, like there's there's one coming up. I forget if it's eight nineteen. Uh, if it's eighteen ninety five or eighteen ninety six. It's the first car race. It happens in, in France. You can bet your ass you're going there. I don't know what for. But it's pretty cool that you're going to go there. None of you are going to have driving, but you know what? You may be driving. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Josh, I definitely can uh, understand that satisfaction. I think there was one moment where, like, uh, and I only had that one time GMing. You went back in time. Somebody had given you a coin, yeah. and then you gave the coin back to the guy who gave it to you. And mm -hmm. that was pretty awesome, I have to say. Yeah, a little uh, circular... Uh... And you know what? That kind of brings up a point. Do you want to GM less? You know, it's it's funny. Yes and no. There's times I want to be a player, and then I want a player, and somebody's GMing. I'm like, oh, I would have totally done it differently. <laughs> <laughs> what are you <laughs> why did Why did they do it that way? That would have been so much better. But that's you know. I, I'm trying to think. I know that the, I think the most recent time you got to be a player was for Bob's. Uh, uh, Marvel light game. And that was four years ago. Can you believe that? Four years ago, really? Yeah, we did like that twenty thirteen. I don't think so. I honestly, I really, I've grown to embrace and appreciate the creative aspect of what I do. I, I also, I, maybe I'm wrong, but the prep time has lessened quite a bit, and the of being a DM seems to be a lot less. That's because I've skilled it now. It's developed a skill. I remember you used to start to do it start two days after, after a session. You were behind. I, I, would, I would, the session would end. There were nights when we were playing when we first started 4E where the session would end and I would do the write-up that night. 
or the, the, the following night, I'd take a day or two off to catch up on sleep, and then I would be prepping again for the next 10 days. I'm glad you don't do that anymore. But I, just, I, I, I appreciate everybody who can GM who's not me. <laughs> I, I, I'm curious, because you've been doing a, you've been sitting in the big seat a lot lately for big stretches. I don't know if that, if you're itching to get out of it more or less than you used to. No, I kind of, you know, most most groups I think have a guy who's the GM most of the time. I, I've accepted that. Well, I, I enjoy that. I guess I enjoy that creative aspect. It, 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 maybe I'm selfish. I get to play all the time. <laughs> That's true. You know what I mean? I don't wait for my turn so huh. much. <laughs> but the, and, and then there are times that I, I like to hand the ball to you guys. Here's the situation. Sort out from what you're going to do. And I can just sit back there and watch you guys fight, fight about it. Yeah. We're like, what does Josh want us to do? And Josh is like, I don't know what they're going to do. <laughs> <laughs> well, Josh, just so you know, I think you're doing a hell of a job. We really do appreciate it. If you weren't doing such a good job, we still wouldn't be playing nine years later. Yeah, if, you, if you weren't driving this whole thing. <laughs> you're always free to drop out. I mean, I enjoy, I, I enjoy it and love it, but if... We've been free to drop out. Nobody wants to. <laughs> I mean, a couple freaks here and there, but fuck. So <laughs> <laughs> That's my job. Yeah. I, I mean, you know, there, there was a time we had people asking to play. That we, we, had, we had a line. We had several. How deep was our line? We had like two or three at one point. By probably the second year or so. Only one of us is a gel right now. So I think I'm going to be at uh, Andrew's mom's house in about 20 minutes. Do you guys want to go over the PowerPoint or later? Um, I, I think that would be all right. Not at all. You don't have to. I, I do want to see it at some point. I will th I, as of right now, I don't know about Jeff, but I think that tonight seems to be good. <laughs> Depends on how long it will take to go through the PowerPoint. I've already had two meetings today. Three. <laughs> let, me, Fair let, me enough. Can, let me see if I can pull it up and share it really easy. It's a, it's a bunch of quick short slides. Oh, okay. I didn't realize you had it. But, but I'm sharing it with all of us. The question is, can I put it on my screen and share it with everybody else? In the fourth quarter, I predict that goblet deaths will be up 25%. That's not what Ford thinks. I'm going 45%. 25%, please. So much better. Hmm. White Hills game. Now, what the hell is this White Hills stuff? Again? I don't know. What do you call it? What do you call our group? Uh, at least Shelton. I thought we were Huntington. See, this is what you guys need to talk about is uh, what should the gaming group be called? It's been nine years already. At this point, I don't think we, if we don't have a name. It should just remain unnamed. Unless we just Anonymous. call it Josh's group. Because it's, you know, <laughs> I get it, without a doubt, not just from a GM perspective, but from an organization perspective, we wouldn't have, we definitely wouldn't have started without Josh. We would never have continued without Josh. Well, thank Agree. You, I think. Thank you, I think. Because I, I do remember, I, I think it was the second or third day at Josh at Computer Share sitting next to me. He says it was a few months in. I think it was days. So, uh, you ever played Dungeons and Dragons? Yeah, I played in college. It was a lot of fun. Would you ever play again? Yes. You make the group, I'll be there. <laughs> what? Josh made the group. <laughs> you know, he, he said, Bob Jones. I played uh, diplomacy with him. I think he'd be great for this. How do I get in touch with him? I still know his number. Let me call his mother. <laughs> <laughs> that part of the story never gets old to me. <laughs> and, and, uh, and had I been a year later, she would have moved, and I wouldn't have gotten it. And yeah, and I don't know, you know, Joel and Jeff. I don't even remember how how Mike. How did you get introduced to wanting to play D and D with us? I vaguely recall being there, but I don't remember the conversation. We were, we, no, we, we were we were having lunch when he was one of the times he was in the office. He was in lunch with us and it came up. Yeah, so I was in the office one time. You guys were having lunch, and you were talking about it, and I overheard you guys. There were one time he was in the office. And uh, yeah. that's the, that's the end of that. Now it was pretty funny if if, jo if Josh would have mentioned that he knew Bob at the time. I knew Bob from the ambulance that's floor, but right. we did not realize that until we got there that first night. That's right. In fact, uh, we pretty much kept that as like I kept the 
D and D side of me very quiet. And it wasn't until my wedding, when my yeah. my crew came and they're like, "What is this D and D thing that Bob does?" <laughs> and Mike was like, "Yeah, I know all about it. What are you talking about?" <laughs> I, yeah, it was it was kind of funny actually because they're like, "What do you mean you know all about that?" Everybody had a line to two other people in the group. Everybody had a line to me and one other person. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I want to say my, I want to kind of cheat and say I had three because I played paintball with Jeff before that. Yeah, but, but pretty but much I never everybody, came, Bob. everybody came in knowing somebody else fairly well. Yeah. yeah. I was hoping was to get cool. four. That I, was wicked cool. I was hoping yeah. to get four. I had, I, I had five without even trying. Game one was the smorgasbord of snacks. Healthy, wonderful. I just remember the fruit. Like, there was so much fruit that Bob brought. Game oh. night two. Meatballs. <laughs> that was over from there. Oh. <laughs> Every, and then after that was everything else. <laughs> I, remember, I mean, at one point, like, dinner was a process. <laughs> it still, it still is. Like, is. You're, just... <laughs> you're just not here for it, buddy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was, it was like an extravagant process, like every, you know, session. Dude, I used to make dip for the first year. It was the yeah, that's right. Dip. Oh, oh, man, that's right. No, it was a uh, tasty oh, simple sin- dip. Sinful. Yes. So. Yes. Tastefully simple onion dip is the best. God, how many shots your white pitcher? Man, Shut up. my white pitcher. Shut up. All right. The Shelton Game Night Nine Years in Review. You got that, Mikey? Oh, yeah, yeah. I got it now. Nicely done. Awesome. Well done. But then we get the. Okay, oh, we had, I have to kill it. Well, the 72308 Game Night begins. Wow, we played Asterisk for a three and a half years. Yeah, we sure did. We did a break briefly. I think uh, we had Jeff's evil one-off yeah. in uh, to the end of December 2011, the beginning of 2012. But I think that's when it ended, right? That was like that was the first thing we did after the Asterisk campaign ended. Maybe, but what do and, we do from what do we do from 212 to 912? Did we just play a bunch of one-offs? I think we did do some one-offs, if I'm not mistaken. Is that when we did Bob's uh, zombie campaign where I turned into a zombie? Ah, uh, yeah, I think so. I think we did that during that time period as well. We gave Jeff a we gave Josh a break. I, I was pretty I was pretty burned out by the end of Idera. <laughs> Although, like I said, at the end of Idera, I put hooks in, so we could go back there. And stuff you guys had done would have impacts now. As long as it's in a different system, or we only play levels one to three and four. <laughs> No, it was meant to be a different system. So that takes you to 2012. If you go forward, you'll see Two more 2013, I guess. Marvel superheroes. I love that one. That was great. All right, and then we did Two More Horrors. I can't believe that was five years ago now. Almost wow. exactly five years ago, we did Two More Horrors. Joel yeah. ran that, right? Joel ran that, yeah. He ran that really well, too. I wish we had recorded that. That would have been pretty entertaining. I, I kind of wonder if we were too old for that. Because up until the Asasarak fight, we had one death. Well, we knew what to expect going in. And I think that was the problem. I, honestly, I'd read Tomb of Horrors. I didn't remember it much at all. But I was experienced enough as a player to be able to meta around a lot of stuff. Yeah. And I, I was kind of wondering what, ha- what would happen if we would play that as our 12-year-old selves. Or even like I did. 18-year-old Joel, Joel selves. Me. We'd be dead. Yeah. Joel <laughs> killed me. No, I, I, we didn't get very far off. So, Ghostbusters watch that. That was not a bad day for me. That was fun. I forgot about that. That was really fun. You, you guys know, I've got that recorded and uh, audio only. But I've been working on making the video pieces to that. And uh, I think the way the rate that I'm going, it'll be ready for Halloween this year. And uh, I think it'll be pretty entertaining. Perfect. Nice. Well, we got uh, we got random acts of science. That was a sci-fi thing. You know, if you guys you guys remember the sci-fi thing's intent had been to play when one or two people couldn't make it. Yeah. Yep. It was supposed to be filmed. And then it turned into a main event. Then it turned into like a nine you know, episode. I, kind say, of I find it interesting that I really think that as far as us being able to... <sighs> Sci-fi is too easy. <laughs> in a way. Like, we, we were able to just come in, to like, when it's sci-fi, especially Savage World sci-fi, we came in and we put role-played the shit out of it. And we just all had fun. We, Savage World's... Fantasy, we sucked at. That's because we kept trying to make a DD. I think so. It, it, but it's interesting how, because I, I, I know, and I've known for years, sci fi and fantasy are the same thing. It's just that 
fantasy is melee heavy, sci-fi is ranged heavy. That's the only difference. But yet somehow when we're playing the games, it's like I have these, I don't know, blinders or cuffs on when we're playing fantasy that aren't there for sci-fi. I think that um, Savage Worlds lends itself to less typical campaigns. Yeah. It's, less it's typical cool. genres. So, uh, Assassin is not East Texas. I'm disappointed we couldn't do better with this, but it just wasn't working for us. Same with Out of the Abyss. Out of the Abyss, it, it looks so good, it didn't play that well to me. I, you know, I wonder, was that a problem of the campaign or the system? Because I felt like 5D was lacking something. And maybe it's because of the campaign. I don't know. I, I it was it was some things we were definitely on the railroad on on the tracks for a lot more of it than I wanted to be. And a lot of a lot I find a lot of times when I'm reading these things, it just doesn't make sense. Uh, yeah, they don't have the best I, writing. I think the big thing about Out of the Abyss is the whole point is to get out of the <laughs> abyss, but the way that the story is written, you you never leave the abyss. You, you're supposed to get caught up in the politics and the intrigue, and well, actually, we we actually, still wanted to get out of the abyss. <laughs> at, at the fifty percent mark, you get out of the abyss. But then you're oh, to, you do. But then you're supposed to go back, get recruited to go back in. Oh, it's like prison break. Yeah, and so you guys actually, if you guys remember, you focused on escaping. You did finally escape. I don't remember. You had no escaping. interest. You had no interest in going back in. <laughs> uh, Mike, yep. Mike I, I'm curious I want you to weigh in what did you think of, of 5e the system did you like 5e the system did you, did you know if there was a difference between you know, did you like the system but not the campaign do you have a, any thoughts on that I um I, I, yeah, so yes okay so from a system perspective I did not think it was horrible. However, I agree with you, Adam. I think I think it felt like it was missing something. Um, I think maybe because we felt I, I don't know. I, I think when I, we played 4E, I think it felt like it had more structure because of the the way it was set up. And I think 5E was trying to be more like Savage Worlds. Ish. Did we leave? Did we? Maybe it's because we didn't do the tactical combat. I I, you know, maybe, maybe because we didn't have tactical combat in there, but. I, I think the problem that I felt like with the abyss was like what Bob said. Like I felt like I just like I thought the whole goal was to get out of the abyss, and it felt like we never got out of the abyss. Yeah, you know, I, I would I would certainly say if when we finish Rippers, if we want to take a few sessions and try five D again, I'll, I'd I'd be happy to brew something up custom so we weren't stuck in the box like that, and, and I should do the whole tactical thing because you guys have, been, have alluded to having some interest in that. Like I said, I, I, yeah, I might be up like for that someday. I, 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 I would not. I like I, yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't kick that to the curb. I'd be okay with that concept. Maybe it's one tactical, and then the rest, theater, theater of the mind every night. You know, have a showcase combat, yeah. and then the, the other ones are more minor. Could be cool idea. I'd give it a try. Definitely. I would let's put that on the list, maybe. So, I, and that's that's a, that's a great way to bridge rippers to whatever's next. Yeah. You know, I have I have two two thoughts on what where where we go next after that. So. Uh, but we we still have it. We the Ripper's plot point is ten points. We've done three. I want to say I can probably condense it down to maybe seven more. So we're probably looking at at a minimum as many sessions as we've done. Probably another ten. Probably another twelve to fifteen to twenty at most to finish. If we don't get stuck on another plot point. <laughs> the plot points are short. It's Josh's stuff is long. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, the best. Ripper's resurrected. Structure for seven sessions. It does not feel like fifteen sessions. Real? I think it's sixty. I think it's sixty. Well, tonight doesn't count because we're not actually playing. So, <laughs> if the tonight way, doesn't count, then we're at fifteen. Yeah. At this point, we're we're gonna not play, right, guys? I just wanted to make sure. It's ten thirty. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't expect to kind of actually play. I figured that this is what would happen, which is totally fine. I just wanted to, to make sure it was set up. I mean, because that's me. You know, at the end of the day, really, it, this is just an excuse for us to get to get together and hang out. It took us a long time to figure that out. I think. We weren't friends yet. Yeah. True. At first, it was about the yep. game. Now it's about hanging out. Yeah, I hadn't been to anybody else's wedding in the group, or birthday party, <laughs> or you know, housewarming, or New Year's party, or you know, realizing you guys were never going to come to Waterbury. <laughs> Good. Well, you definitely see how uh, 
you know, the, the food piece, talking and hanging out before the game, see, the time period has expanded over the years. It used to be like, let's go right away. Be, we'll eat as we play. Hurry up and eat. Yeah. <laughs> now yep. it's like, guys, Mikey's waiting. Guys, and Mikey, it's yep. always me. Guys, Mikey's waiting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if you were just to move back up here, Mike, I really wonder if we would be playing still or if we'd just be hanging out. It'd be like 9, 9, 30 would be starting. Would that yeah, be? definitely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So. so here you go. Uh, so far, our campaigns that we have recorded, there are 79 uploaded. We've got an entire section of Out of the Abyss that's not up there yet, and the Ghostbusters one off. 40,300 views. $40,000 Which <laughs> <laughs> Doing the write-ups for other stuff. <laughs> but this is kind of crazy. Uh, the total time that people have watched those videos, 135,000 minutes, which is 93 days nonstop. That's crazy. That's a lot of hours spent uh, that's living our lives. That's almost a third of a year. Yeah. Rough, rough average is 500 views per video. I think that's pretty impressive. That's not too bad when you look at it that way. Yeah. We'll look at that whopping revenue for 2011 to 2013. Zero! Yeah, there's a lot going yep. on in this slide. We're making no money. That's true. <laughs> One cent. Hey, oh, but then, a, all eventually, in 2016, we made an entire penny. It was very exciting. So, so Bob, is, isn't, <laughs> yeah. there, isn't there a way to like, commercialize this and target the ads so that we'd like, be advertising Wizards of the Coast and those kinds of places? YouTube chooses what ads we see. But the other big mistake that I made in the first bunch is uh, I used music that was copyrighted. copyrighted. So even though we get the, the counts and everything, I think all the revenue for a lot of them goes to... Uh, goes to other people who made the music, even if we only have 30 seconds of copyrighted music in a three-hour video. So that's the big catch. And then what we should do is have... 29 minutes. No. Hey, seconds. how's it going? Or have, uh, you know, 50 or 100 different 30-second clips and let YouTube, let, let Google have to figure out where it goes. Oh, we're still, we're still really yeah. at three cents that time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we're now? still at uh, pennies, right? But well, then all of a sudden, per... after March, look what happens. One cent there. One cent per month. January, February, March, one cent. And then April, 11, May, 72. Are these, are these the current, how yeah. much we earn each month? Or, or uh, correct. With parentheses cumulative. is total. And then above that is how much we earned for that month. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we earned 10 cents in April. Damn, May was awesome. That's probably when I was trying to do all the write-ups. And I was watching it all <laughs> But you had your ad so it wouldn't have counted. Which takes us to today, uh, where we're at $1.57. Woohoo! We're rich, biatch! <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you. Uh, but the only catch is you can't actually use any of it until you hit $100. Oh. So we will have to eventually, I think, we'll decide as a group like, like how we want to spend that $100. Years. <laughs> we're, we're at I hope we're all. I hope we're all alive to see that one hundred dollars. So you know what, guys? That'll be at our twentieth anniversary. So, uh, uh, all right. So we're jumping down here. Total videos uploaded, but most importantly here is the views. So we need more Deadlands. Oh, uh, was Deadlands chapter the one that tech? Oh, time travel techno. That's something. Wow. Uh, time travel techno guys was. Remember, I uh, spent a lot of time giving you this weird special effect when uh, we traveled in time for the superhero. That, that Doctor was, Who. And we, and we each had our lines. We had to read them in order, and we got them. We had no clue what was going on. So good. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> that was fun. I enjoyed that. But uh, at any rate, I took that video uh, for that special effect, and I, Andrea added some music to it, and uh, that has taken off. There's people who just watch that techno again and again. Uh, at any given day, there are 50 hits on that video. It's crazy. Oh my gosh, really? Yeah. That's weird. I find it interesting that, you know, okay, Deadlands Reloaded Chapter 1. I have no idea where we got 20,000 views on that. Assassin's Not Chapter 1. Like. Oh wait, hang on. We... This is how many minutes? How many minutes, I think, oh, of, okay. of viewing? That's okay, though. But like, you know, oh, wow. That time travel techno hit 20,000 minutes, 21,000 is even more That's impressive crazy. at that point. Because it's a shorter video. But, it is. It's like it, just five minutes long. I, I find that ironic. I'm oh, sorry. Let's say, so the, the first of things, people go, oh, let's see what these guys are doing. Uh, that fucking sucked. <laughs> Except for Nick of Time Chapter 2. Yeah, how, how is Nick of Time so out of order? Uh, I think I know why. Unless uh, Nick of Time Nick, 1 is the, so shorter. That uh, Chapter 1 is just introduction to your characters. There's no gameplay. And then Chapter 2, you are thrust into battle against a giant caterpillar. 
So if there's people who want to actually see gameplay or get to the action, um, then, and then also it's got Roll20. It shows a map, and there's, like, creatures moving on the map, whereas the first session is just one picture, and we're just talking about our characters. So that could be why. So no, that's interesting. So, so Deadlands and... Uh, Nick of Time are our most successful total uh, campaigns as far as YouTube minutes goes. It seems like. Uh, yeah, total, total I guess so. Campaign. Although, uh, no, Assassin's Not, right? Uh, Assassin's Not comes in at 9,109 minutes. So but, you know, that's... But, but Nick of Time is 6,700 plus 4,500 oh. plus 3,000. That's yeah, I mean. but it's also it's also been out the longest, right? It's been out uh, for four years. Good point. So it's got the value of longevity too. Good point, though. Okay. Well, so oh, the other thing that's kind of interesting is Nick of Time is broken into maybe one hour chunks, whereas the rest of our sessions are just the entire session for the night. Yeah. I don't know if, if people like quit, you know, halfway through they don't go back, but maybe they're more bite sized. So this is interesting because last year the ratio of male to female was 70-30. Now we are overwhelmingly male, 92% versus 8.2% females out there. Totally now, good, thank you. Which, which video gets the most women? Uh, it would be the final chapter of Assassin's Knot <laughs> with 38%. That's weird. Yeah. And Time Travel Techno, 30% female. And the only video that is 100% male was... The superheroes chapter two. Don't, <laughs> don't know why, <laughs> but probably small sample size. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we're big in Japan, evidently. Hmm. But uh, here are the here are the top uh, locations where we uh, have the most viewed. Of course, the United States, ninety-two thousand yeah. minutes. Just, just the UK, by, Canada. By, by language uh, language population, I'm not surprised at the first three. I am surprised that Philippines tops out Australia. I'm surprised Isn't Iron Man the list. I mean, Norway winter, you you got nothing to do anyway. But how many Norwegians speak? I guess a lot of people speak English. I shouldn't fucking be ignorant. You ignorant. I can't help this. but wonder if uh, all the stuff with the rippers in Germany have brought the Germans, but I have no idea if that is true. Ignorance, all right. <laughs> That's true, Bob. Uh, oh, pretty oh, charts. There's, there's a lot of detail here. Yeah, it's, yeah break it down, it's just a breakdown of male versus female in all the uh, the, the places, uh, the top uh, countries. I'm going to guess that the blue is male and the green is female. Yeah, spot on. <laughs> what is that one What is that one that's heavily female? That's got to be the... Uh, is that Philippines? No, I think that's... I think it's country. I think it, it's... Uh, uh, Philippines, a lot more women. Maybe 50, huh. 50 men to women in Philippines. That's curious. Huh. We need to go there and be rock stars. And Whoa, it, oh, no, no, what no, did you what do, do, do? Ray? Can you right click and go back? How do I. What, I, I know how to go back. Hit escape. Oh, that's true, too. Yeah, we're in the slideshow, which fucks it up. There we are. Alright, so videos with the most likes. Time, time, travel travel so zoom. time Travel Techno was pretty big, but the Deadlands one was definitely uh, a pop the most popular of the actual sessions. Which, it makes sense because we have a really good joke within the first three or four minutes. And then also, uh, there, I don't want to give away any spoilers, but there is a shocking turn of events with, uh, with one of Adam's characters that happens uh, about halfway through. Set and I think a lot of people were surprised to see that. How many of you guys knew that that was totally pre-planned? None of them. I had no idea. And let's not talk about it to spoil it totally, but I had no idea nope. that that was pre-planned. You know, that was I, awesome. I, honestly, you look at the ones that are popular... If it does not surprise me, Deadlands is popular. People play Deadlands; they want to see that. That's their biggest setting. Oh, is it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there, there's that. now four full, full plot points for Deadlands. Wow. We can play Deadlands for like the next five or six years and not finish all the plot points. Wow. Each one being but the other, you would need different characters for each plot, each yeah. set of plot points. But there's a the lot, other... of, a lot there if you like that setting. And then there's Deadlands. The other thing that's Oh, I'm sorry, Josh. Go ahead. There's Deadlands Noir, so it's like uh, oh, that's 30s. Yeah, 30s, 30s with dead, you've advanced the Deadlands timeline to then. So Ghost Rock or wherever it was still exists in the 20s and 30s. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's supposed to be a really good pop point, but there's only so many you can do. Yeah. 
What's also interesting, by the way, is that uh, I think Assassin's Knot uh, is coming up through the ranks very quickly, and it's only, what, a year and a half old, tops? I wonder, so, right, I wonder if there's an AD&D revival. I, well, I think there are, I don't know if it's a revival so much as there is definitely a group of people like-minded like ourselves who lived during those times, and uh, just, it's a great walk through memory lane. I wonder what people Google to get us. ClassicMarvelForever.com. We get some links from Emerald? Fuck yeah. Google Docs. Yeah, well, I was posting stuff in Emerald for a while. Same with Pegging, so those are, those are almost... I've never heard of Yandex. Never have I. Never have I. DSLMug.org. How does Google Docs refer? Where's, where's Bing? <laughs> exactly where it should be. Uh, <laughs> uh, I do want to look at the dislikes, though, when Bob is back. There's a, there's WhatsApp. Uh, I think the one thing on this list that is not there that's been climbing is WhatsApp is, uh, is the next one on that list. WhatsApp the chat? People Evidently. Are sh- so people are saying, hey, this. Check this out. I saw this, check it out. That's that's, wild. that's right. But yeah. I guess Bob or Josh kind of went a little. I don't know where well, we are. Go we'll back up one. Scroll. Scroll up one. Okay. One more. One more. I really wish we had War of the Dead reported. That would have been a lot. Yeah. I think we would have some really good hits for that. Videos with the most you dislikes. Know, one. Oh yeah. One, one. One. Some asshole went and disliked all of the fucking videos posted <laughs> by Scribe. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they didn't like it. Maybe yeah, they just they... legitimately didn't. I think that is a downside. These are also, they happen to be some of the more popular videos, yeah, except for Rippers. Stars. So, uh, you know, I think eventually when you hit critical mass, whether that's 20,000 minutes of viewing or 28,000, eventually there's going to be one person who but you know, it's I, not their cup of tea. I, I don't know if I'm upset by it or, or happy with the fact that there's just one miserable fuck out there who was like, Fuck you, I don't like this. Fuck you, I don't like this. Fuck you, I don't like this. Because I'm envisioning that being one person just like all those videos. <laughs> Although at the same time, you know, it shocks me. East Texas University, like I remember when I was putting that up, uh, there is a lot of very potentially offensive things that we have going on at East Texas University. And not a single dislike for East Texas University somehow. We have stereotypes. Where's we the have... Wong Fei? Uh, oh, Wong oh, We had Wong Wong. 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 Uh, no, no, I'm saying we have Wong. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that, uh, yeah. that was that was could have been potentially. Uh, it shows yeah. how much I give a shit. <laughs> I'll be your driver, man. All right. So, uh, and Bob, before I was saying something, I don't remember what it was. Oh, we was, we're back to referrals about WhatsApp, and then I think something came out of there. Oh. Uh, you got something on that? I got nothing. No, I, I interrupted you, but I'm looking at also. We have referrals from Google Docs. Do you do you know how that happens? Uh, so my thought is that uh, there might be people out there, and I don't have details, but I have seen this when I've done like searching for things that uh, you can't find on BitTorrents. There are people who use Google Docs almost as like their homemade websites. They maintain lists and things like that. Yeah. So I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, there might be some people who just maintain a list of interesting things to listen to. Like somebody might maintain a to-do list okay, Bob, of you know, podcasts the they want to work through. What's the end? The index might be a foreign search engine. I think so. I'm not. I haven't looked it up, but uh, agree. I think that's what it is. And I do like. I mean, I was people trying to look for stuff. Just I want to look for videos about Deadlands. Number mm-hmm. one. Number two, though, is it's basically the it's a referral. It's not just yeah. WhatsApp, Facebook. So we're you know, our second best way of finding people is being referred by somebody who's already listened. The index <laughs> is the Philippine search engine. Are you serious? Yes. No. <laughs> We're making that up. Could be. <laughs> All right. So comment highlights. Oh, guys... So uh, Adam, can can you uh, assign a uh, special voice to this and read this out loud? I think it'll be entertaining. <laughs> you guys were hilarious, especially the DM. Which one were you? They they elf that brought the guy's bag and the head to the priest. That was funny. I don't believe in TPKs, but I would have at least made the guards haul one of your party into jail the morning after you guys ransacked the inn. That was funny, too. DGT Outlaw. And then we have... This is hilarious. Good job, guys. (laughs) El Cuopo. And then... uh, Am I an enclave that for north? (laughs) Lela Falaud. This series is hilarious. 
It's Mark Boyston. <laughs> really? Somebody picks up and nags about that. Come on. Yandex is what's uh, is the most popular website in Russia. Oh, so it's hackers. Seriously? Hmm. So it's it's hackers calling. Guys, there was no collusion between myself and the Russians in Literally putting together this. Yeah, you, you've never you've never met with the Russians. You're not working with Putin. We know. Nope. Right. You haven't had any <laughs> meetings with any lawyers from Russia. He's going to nope. Australia. Oh, again. I forget. I forgot about those four meetings, but never mind. <laughs> we know we know your son has been meeting with them too, with the Russian lawyer. He's <laughs> a legitimate son. <laughs> yeah. So I'm trying to remember the the comment from the the long comment. What is that from? That had to be from Assassin's Knot. Yes, that was Assassin's Wait, Knot indeed. Joel was hilarious. I I, I no know. Offense, Good on Joel. DGT Outlaw, if you're listening. Thank you, but what the fuck were you smoking? <laughs> the accountant is the funniest guy in the group. There's a fucking problem there. <laughs> were we all drunk and sleeping? Yeah. Well, that's Jeff every week, so yeah. <laughs> all of us, though? Anyway. I'm not, yeah, I'm not really sure on that one either, Adam. But I'm glad that, that people found this entertaining, even I'm if it's the last... I'm glad with the technicality about the minds at Fort North. That's very useful. Yeah. That's, that's... yeah. Now, I, I appreciate that people are, are you know, I, don't, I will take laughing at. talking about vampires and... I, I will take being laughed at just as much as I'll take being laughed with. In a uh, decent college in eastern Texas. And <laughs> the crazy thing they talk about that, is that no. there's a mind outside that. Was. <laughs> that was a plot point, too. Or, or one of their stories, a, a savage Oh, tale. that wasn't something that we came up with? <coughs> that was savage that was, that was, oh, wow. Oh, there's more. <clears throat> oh, yeah. There's a ton more. There's way so, more than what's on this list, but these are some so, some interesting uh, ones. It turns out there like totally was an East Texas University, but the name was changed to Texas A and M Commerce in like nineteen ninety six. Uh, also love the intro, bro. Feels like it has a lot of gravity falls and Twin Peaks influence on it. Also, since I totally live near Houston, like you can tell by my accent, I thought you'd be interested to know it actually has two Chinatowns in it, since one of the characters is from Hong Kong. One of the whitest people ever played the guy from Hong Kong. I won't say who Adam, if only you had known. We didn't know there were Chinatowns there for I'm, you. I'm it was an entire plot point. If only I wasn't totally fucking ignorant. <laughs> also, has an international imports district on the streets of Bel Air. Says Brother Malachi. I'm butchering my accents. Malachi. Malachi. Yeah. I was thinking Malachi. Yeah. yeah Malachi. <laughs> and then, oh, probably one of the best compliments we could have gotten. Oh, I wish you guys did sophomore year too. So that's fucking cool. There's still more points. Yeah. There. Oh yeah. Um, I'm kind of running out of accents though. Oh, okay. I'll do the one. Hello. You got to do one low. Oh, I don't even remember what oh. accent. Oh, hang on. <laughs> Uh, hello, will you allow me to use a video for my short film? No, no, fuck, I don't know, I don't have it anymore. But I can do. Hello, will you allow me to use this video for my short film? No, damn, I'm way out of practice. I'm making an ambitious project. Please reply. I may give special thanks credit in my short film. Mumaya, did you let Mumaya use the video? I did, Excellent. and it took months and months. It took about six months, but eventually, Mumaya published a dramatic independent film called Mistaken, and a portion of our video is in his film. <laughs> what is, did you watch the whole film? I watched the whole film. Now, uh, I don't want to give away the surprise twist, but I will say that it follows a young uh, man and a young woman, both who are in school, uh, presumably in India. I'm not sure where exactly. Um, and uh, I think the guy has a crush on the girl, and uh, he's, but she has more of a crush on him, and things take a twist, and there is a shocking uh, twist, and I will leave it to you to watch it someday. But I put the link in there so you can watch it yourself. How much dancing is there? You know, all the uh, there is. <laughs> you'll have to you have to check it out, but I think there was dancing. Yeah, yeah. You know what e ETU all it makes me think of is that picture I dug up of the ugly chick that chased Jeff's character around, and then your character. It's just every one of you guys around. I, I I genuinely have a legitimate problem with that. While I don't find that particular person aesthetically pleasing, 
I realize that there's a person out there that we are I really feel bad about that. Of. I do feel bad about that part. <laughs> I do feel bad right. about that part. And I stated it in the video a couple of times. It was, was her name Roxanne? Roxanne, yeah, Roseanne yes. or Roxanne? Roxanne. Oh, Roxanne. Oh, but to it was Roxanne. On the flip side, yeah. I have no fun, no problem making fun of Walmart people because I am a goddamn hypocrite. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I, I do you know? Do you remember about how long that video is, Bob? Uh, I'd say it runs about 15 minutes, maybe maybe less, maybe 10. I am totally gonna watch that. So now so you might miss it, just so you know, it's part of the time travel special effect, uh, part of that uh, warp. Okay. So it's only it's used at a very momentous point, uh, but uh, but if, if you blink, you'll miss it. Nice. And, and well, Maya, we appreciate you requesting uh, permission, but I think that for the most part, this is probably cons I won't say. Did he use less than 30 seconds? Because otherwise, he owes you some money. Yeah. He, he, he used less than 30 seconds. Yeah. So does that make it, it's fair use, right? Not, not that our stuff is public domain, but they use it for fair use. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But thank you. I appreciate that, Mumaya. <laughs> um, I'm, oh boy. Oh, I was going to not read this until I read the first two, three words. DM blew it when he has Abraham state that he believes the mayor is evil. There's nothing in the mod to suggest that he has any idea about the mayor's involvement. It only states that he will not speak ill of the mayor when Glammy is present. Uh, from the module, he, Abraham, knows his barkeeper Glammy is a spy for the mayor. Thus, Abraham will always appear to support the mayor openly when Glammy is present. He does not know the mayor is part of the Assassin's Guild. He has no idea Glammy is associated with either. You know, to think, to dismiss it at the end, yeah. I don't like that comment. Thank you, you know, whoever put that. You know, thinking back I, on this... <laughs> we we struggled. There weren't any clues to follow. No, it was fucking hard as shit to try and figure out what the fuck was going on. I, and I don't know if I should if we blame Joel for that or if we blame the module for not spelling out the clues that should be given. Watch but your there, backs. Watch, watch your backs. backs. But there's but definitely no me. clues in there. And how many sessions was that too? It's like, wait, who was that? Who, oh, did we, did we already question well. that? Did we, did no, we, actually, did I had a cheat sheet for the people. Eight eight, eight sessions. We we were eight sessions total. And by the way, uh, the, the gentleman who posted this turned out to be uh, one of our biggest fans. He really enjoyed that session. Is he the one who uh, he also enjoyed... commented about Mayans that far north? Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, no, a different person. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I got to say, you know, I have no doubt that Joel at some point tried to help us along because, God, we were mired in the mud on Assassin's Creed. We were lost there, yeah. So, I, I that, feel like this Joel was so, so kind to us. us. Although I will say the, the breakout yeah. moment for me, the part I really loved... Uh, Josh was definitely going to get captured, and he casts the one spell that he has, command, and he shouts confess, and uh, and then I think the, the lead sheriff then confesses to murdering somebody. That was that was pretty awesome. Yeah. yeah. You know, for that one. All right. Because I'm sorry, but these comments are way too good to not read out loud. No, <laughs> The vibration in the rear comment when they ran into the aliens in the sewer is hilarious. Laugh out loud. I also can't remember if this is a house rule or not, but I really like the way the learning power stunts is handled in this game. What is that from? I don't have a... Stunts makes me think it's um, uh, uh, Marvel. Aliens in the sewer? Yeah. Okay, I guess that's... I don't remember that, but, but a vibration in the rear comment had to be either me or Jeff. <laughs> Although you weren't... You weren't I was a player you then. You could have been, been Josh, too. This was, uh, this was from Superheroes, and uh, this was actually uh, Chris, sort of, the Whisperer. And uh, I think I, I might have I, I been the one who said that one. Really? Uh, but, uh, it's not a yeah, it, it was... Jones. Yeah, yeah, maybe, but I did it in a uh, sort of straight man... I let him play the funny guy, and I was the straight man, repeating what he was saying. But uh, it's out there somewhere. <laughs> That's good. I hope that wasn't our, our funniest comment. But I'm glad to hear that people, you know, are, are entertained by us. We're, oh, I'm a dirty motherfucker. If we were really clever? I'm a dirty motherfucker. I don't know about you guys. I don't know why you put up with me. If we were really good, we'd post, if we go back, find any appropriate good, bad, uglies, and post those as comments. Oh, yeah. Oh. We could probably do that. That's not a bad idea. I think that... Bob should work on that. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm starting to think Bob puts in more time with game night than I do off hours. Nowadays, yes. Overall, <laughs> he could also go back and make sure the syntax is perfect on the good, bad, and ugly, and the time that it occurred in the video. 
<laughs> you can cross reference, <laughs> and then you can put links in your comment. You can have links to a point in the video. So if he just quits his job, he could get all this done. <laughs> and, and we could be up to we could be up to a hundred dollars in like ten years instead of twenty. <laughs> <laughs> so I will say. So there you go. That took a little longer than the ten minutes that I thought it was going to be. Sorry about that, Adam. Have you arrived yet? I did. I'm. Uh, I. You guys know where I am. Yeah. Once yeah. here's the wall of eighties. There you go. Eighties. <laughs> There's that Frogger. Parts of it work. I remember that. Does she have uh, the the football or base football game? Awesome. Yeah, she's got yeah. somewhere in here. There's one Payday's of those. Yep, absolutely. Payday's awesome. I don't remember Payday so much. We just paid Payday the other day. I, I haven't played it in ages. Basically, you have a job and you make money once a month. You make two hundred dollars, and like every, you have to move across a calendar and then you pay your bills. Um, and it's just freakily like real life. That sounds intriguing. And I think it's fun when you don't have a job and you're a kid, but then now it's like, oh god, I already have enough bills to pay. <laughs> well, there you go. Well, you guys got the tour. Well, gentlemen, it has been an enjoyable nine years. I would love to do nine years several more times over. <laughs> fact, when I hit the lotto, I plan on at least flying back every once in a while for game night. Oh, you'll be remote like you I very, very well, maybe. <laughs> why, why would you have yeah, to back? Why did you fly me back too then? It might, might Why don't you just model, fly us up to where? Because <laughs> wherever fly us I'm up, gonna uh, be, Adam. I want us to be able to have game night for game night. Not because if you guys come out to wherever I am, we're not gonna do a game night. <laughs> you know, you have to bring us out like four days beforehand. True. Then we'll be calmed down by that. <laughs> but in all seriousness, you know, the, I think next, I think the tenure actually falls on a Monday or Tuesday, so it is really close. Oh, nice. I already put it on my calendar. I think you put it on all of our calendars. I think I did. I'm playing. I'm playing games by myself. So I'm. I'm so it's going to be a, like, like normal. You <laughs> <laughs> walked into that. One. Yeah. Totally. Oh yeah. I'll be. I'll be doing cosplay playing. <laughs> cosplay searching. <laughs> Which character are you dressing up as at the ten year reunion? Yes. I think for the ten year anniversary, everybody should take the whole day off, and we should game all day. Done. Oh, I'd be up for that. Yeah, but you know, you'd have to take that off for your family. That's like it's just hard. Even better. It's easier to want to do, harder to actually do. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'll make you feel if you guys all take the day off and game all day, I'll fly my ass up there. <laughs> That's I am absolutely game for that. I would be definitely willing to take, uh, take some time off for that. <laughs> we like 12, we play 12 to 12 or 12 to 10 or something like that. Mm-hmm. Oh, God. My ass hurts thinking about that. <laughs> Don't worry, Ripsick. We'll roll you around a couple times. <laughs> Sounds good. I love it. <laughs> Bob, how did, your, how did your, your, your phone keep up with the battery? Or you got an extra oh. charger on it? <clears throat> Boy, you're very uh, perceptive, Josh. Can you see this? That is a massive external extra battery. So the, the phone itself lasted me up until 12% charge when we hit the uh, halfway mark at the gas station. And at that point, I plugged it into the uh, external battery, and now it's yeah. Charged. That's a that's a he, you can tell Bob travels because only people who travel carry those in their bags all the time. Two of them. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I have two of them in my bag too, Bob. <laughs> oh, Great minds think alike. A small one. <laughs> so it has been a pleasure as always. I'm gonna call us quits at eleven. Good call. I'm, Definitely. I'm making the work on time tomorrow. Then. I have an eight right. meeting, so. <clears throat> Yeah, so uh, is is session fifteen in two weeks? Are we on or? I'm shooting for two weeks. I'm okay. in. Uh, I'm shooting for two weeks. I already have the idea. Um, so now it's just a matter if I go look for some pictures and stuff. But um, I got the idea for that. That'll probably be a level up. That'll put you in season, and that introduces the next round of plot points. Okay. Cool. And then we have to All right. So we're looking at August seventh, and then August twenty first would be two weeks from that. 21st is no good work. I'm out I'm on vacation that week. Okay. Well, that works out perfect because I'm on vacation too, but I would have called in. Where are you going? We're going up, we're up to Maine, to Acadia. Oh, oh, that's great. I'll be on a boat. Ain't no calling in. Nope. I heard the Wi-Fi on Acadia is good. 
Uh, the Wi-Fi in Acadia is non-existent, like most of the cell phone service. <laughs> Are you flying? However, in town, however, in town, it's just fine. I was gonna say, I heard that they you fly roads; they just have to pair or drop in. <laughs> flying into Portland, Portland, Mike? Uh, no, we're actually flying into Bangor. Uh, okay, that makes sense. Bangor, I hardly know. Yep. Oh, never mind. All right, guys, stop with the recording. All right, boys. Bob, thank you for on the road. Hang around, bud. <laughs> oh, sorry. So, so the vibrator brings up the rear. Oh, pro. Huh. <laughs> okay. So the vibrator will be taking the rear? Yeah. Oh, man. Don't worry. Don't worry. He's the whisperer. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Good news, that screamer. <laughs>